You know, I don't think we can ever truly develop a power golf swing that will be consistent and really hold up day after day until we learn how to release the club head correctly. As my teacher Mike Austin used to call it, it's a supple, quick whip or snap of the hands to throw the club head around the circle without impedance. So right after this, let me clarify what he meant by that and how you're going to release the club head better for more distance and more accuracy. Hey, this is Steve with HitItLonger.com. I'm on a journey to hit it longer and straighter off the tee, be longer and straighter all the way to the green because for me, that's just what makes golf more fun. Hey, if you're on a similar journey, won't you consider hitting the subscribe button, liking this video at the end if you liked it, leaving a comment down below. And don't forget to pick up my free Slice Cure video and my free distance ebook. I have left the details in the link down in the description below. So my mentor, Mike Austin, believed in a full and free, very powerful release of the club head from near the top of the swing as we started down. Now Mike practiced what he preached. In fact, he was measured at over 150 miles an hour of club head speed. And this was back then with a persimmon headed driver and a steel shaft. So he was quite a large, powerful man. He could swing the club probably pretty close to the absolute max of human potential. So it's very interesting to study his method. And it might be a little different than what you're used to. So if you've got a little bit of an open mind, I think I'm gonna help you today through this video, uh, get your drives a little further down the fairway. So what does a free release feel like? Well, that's why I like to use this uh, training egg called the Speed Whoosh, because the ball at the end of the stick here um, makes a nice loud swooshing sound. So it really gives you an idea on whether or not you are releasing the club head. So if I were to swing through and use the advice uh, uh, some teachers will give you that you're supposed to hold on or not flip the club, something like that. Well, I wouldn't make this thing swoosh. Watch this. If I were to just hold and not, see, we get a very, very, very small amount of whoosh. But now if I throw freely, throw the end of the ball here uh, past the butt end of the club like this, we get a really loud, high-pitched swoosh sound. So I really like this tool because it helps us feel the freedom of a release going by the sound. Now you can pick one of these up at my website. I've left a link in the description below. And not only that, it can help you train to get faster as well. So the quality of a good release is a supple swoosh or whip of the club head. Um, here's another definition for you. I like to say, uh, what is the release exactly? See, I think a lot of other people, they won't be able to define, define exactly what a release is, except they'll just call it a release and expect you to kind of know what they're talking about. So let's define it specifically as going from a 90 degree wrist cock on the backswing to the left forearm, around to a 90 degree wrist cock or recock here as I go into the follow through. So if you can go past 90 degrees on both sides, a la like a Dustin Johnson or a Kyle Berkshire, the current uh, world long drive champion, and you've got enough flexibility that you can get to 100 or 110 degrees at the wrist, and then 100 or 110 degrees at the wrist this way. Hey, all the more power to you. I think you're gonna squeeze out some more club head speed because of that extra flexibility in the wrists. A greater range of motion is good. It allows us more time and distance to be able to accelerate the club to its maximum pot uh, potential speed. Now we also have to define when the release starts and when it reaches its crescendo or its fastest speed, you could say, which on the wish, the whoosh stick that I was using, it would be, where does it sound the loudest to you? So that's also why I like that stick. So we now know from a lot of 
force and torque measurements both directly on the grip now. We have some cool tools that scientists use where they can actually directly measure torque uh, with like a, uh, on the grip, but also through 3D video analysis, we know that the throw of the club, in other words, the initial uncocking of the wrists, the force starts here. So the myth of lagging or trying to delay the release of the club head or the throw of the club head is just a, a busted myth at this point. You can't go on believing that. Okay, so it starts back here. We now know the latest, even from direct measurement through really cool grip tools they have now, but also through really complex 3D uh, video analysis of where they can come out with very specific uh, forces and torques acting on the handle of the club. We know that the uncocking of the wrist, so we got it to this 90 degree cocked angle. So pushing with the thumb and trying to uncock here starts about shoulder high. So um, right after you've stepped down and gone into your transition, that gets the club to here and then you are just freewheeling it through the impact zone. Now where the release should be the loudest or the fastest should not be at the ball, at least if there was no ball to collide with, because we know that the ball slows the club head down as it transfers energy to it. But what we really want is for the club head, so our intention is to make the club head reach its maximum speed uh, out beyond the ball about 30 inches or so. so that would look something like this, and then we'll slow it down. You can see where my release was. So the club head will reach its fastest or the middle of your release when the shaft of the club gets between both arms and points right back up at my sternum again. So you can see in the slow-mo that I did, the, that's about this point here, it's about 30 inches past the ball. So it's really important that not only do you want to release back here very freely with a burst of energy, but you're intending to put your maximum speed well out in front of the ball. So you just want to intend to swoosh somewhere out in front of you. Now, being able to do both of these things, both start releasing back here and still have your top speed past the ball means that you have to blend in the rest of a good swing, the pivot and turn of the body added to the release. So if we just released from shoulder height, you hear where the the ball. So the only way that I'm going to be able to do both of these two ideas, you remember the, the wrists and the re release of the club head are not existing in a vacuum. It's part of a, a system. So in that system will also be the pivot and turn. So although I am exuding a force with my thumbs to try to uncock the club, at the same time I am shifting and turning and it takes a second to go from 90 degrees cocked around to this point here. It takes a second. Uh, it doesn't happen instantaneously. It takes about a quarter or a third of a second to finish that. So, but I'm still intending to get my fastest point in my swing out in front. Now the motion of the wrists, the action of the wrists and hands, and to some extent the right elbow, those are what we might call active torques. In other words, we can feel that we are snapping the wrists. So that feels very active. But there's another source of the release of the club head. In other words, remember, the, go back to the definition, we're going from a 90 degree cock position to a 90 degree recock position on this side of the body. There's more at work there. So the way that the handle of the club is traveling, 
we're going to get an extra kick out of it so the handle is controlled by a lot of things but by the shifting and turning and angles of the body going through impact it's controlling this journey and if this journey is excellent then not only are you going to get a huge boost in club head speed what you might call passive uh, not because your body's not doing it it's obviously your body is contracting muscles to make this torque but it's something aside from the the bursting snap of the club head that you feel in your wrist so we can just crudely call it kind of a passive torque that helps to square up the club face and propel the club to its highest speed now through various different implements including your own driver is an implement that you can train and use it to create more speed through training you can use other either lighter weight uh, implements like the speed whoosh you can use the speed stick set that's fine anything where you have the intent on leaving your comfort zone and trying to swing faster than normal like this so I'm trying to swing just simply faster than normal leave my comfort zone more explosion um, over time your brain is going to coordinate that faster speed with a ball in the way it doesn't necessarily a, a strength equation it's more of a coordination equation anything with quickness it's more through repetition so you can speed up your release once it becomes free like I'm showing you here and you can get faster and faster and faster it's really only limited to your imagination now let me give you a couple of my favorite free and full release exercises so you can really feel what it feels like to release the club well the first one is you might have seen this before my wrap the pole exercise this is Mike Austin's original mud bank story so I've got my elbow real close to the pole here and this is to make sure that I'm throwing this club head without impeded, uh, impedance so impedance could take the form of either trying to hold the wrist angle and delay the throwing or uncocking of the club it could also take the form of trying to pull the left arm so trying to pull the handle or harpoon with the butt end of the stick or ring the church bell but instead we want to throw the club head around the pole again from 90 degrees or more to 90 degrees or more now the other exercise I really like is again going back to the speed whoosh and you can even do this like you're pretending to hit a baseball uh, kind of a low pitch like say by the knees what I'll do is start with a little bit of a narrower stance and take a little baby step and I'm gonna try to put my swoosh well out in front something like this step turn swoosh so this is locating my swoosh out where it's supposed to be you're gonna get all kinds of benefit from getting your swoosh out in front notice that I did not hold back I am trying to crack the whip and snap it and accelerate it freely now releasing the club head like this I think is going to take so much thought out of your mind you're going to free up from so much of the the chains that have been put on you through all kinds of different instruction and if you just have the notion of where you want to swoosh and how loud you want to swoosh you'll be able to control pretty much every shot so let me see if I can hit a couple and I'll try to put it all together remember we're going from a 90 to 90 swishing out in front freely accelerating without either pulling or delaying the release so let's take a look So essentially the swing thoughts become much simpler here it's just shifting turning swooshing shifting turning swooshing out in front and then you can forget about all the other swing thoughts say so, hey I'm gonna go back to 
my release, making it more supple and quick and fast. Um, hey, I hope you got a couple of good tips out of this video. Uh, if you did, don't forget to hit subscribe. Thanks to Golf Development Complex in Moore Park, California for hosting us today. And hey, I hope to see you in the next video. If not, I'll see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Take care.